This new AI plugin can take any sound and turn it into a synth preset. You can take this sound and turn it into a playable synth that sounds like this. Or you can take this pluck from your favorite song and turn it into a synth preset patch that you can figure out how it was made. With the world of AI comes a plethora of tools and gadgets and gizmos that you can use to up your production game. One of those tools is called Synplant 2. Yes, that's the plugin that I mentioned at the beginning of the video, and it's the one that's going to allow you to take any sound and turn it into a synth preset. Not a synth, a synth preset. A synth preset will allow you to change the oscillators, allow you to change the envelope, the attack, the release time, just like you are working with a normal synth. However, this plugin does fall short in a couple of areas. It's not the perfect solution to this problem that they're trying to solve. Throughout the rest of this video, I'm going to show you the best strategies I've found while experimenting to use this synth specifically. Let's hop into the DAW so I can show you. Here we are in the Logic DAW, and now we're going to dive into some of the sounds that it's actually recreated. Each of these kind of groupings is a different sound that I've recreated with a synth on my own bounced it to audio, then uploaded it to Synplant to see if it could recreate it. But before we get into all of that, let's just jump into Synplant and dissect some of its actual features so that it works as like a synth. All right, here we have the Synplant plugin. Now this plugin is a synth itself, but where it shines is when you create your own presets using the sounds you selected, like I showed you in the beginning of the video. So just like normal, if we hop into this DNA Felix, Felix DNA double helix, we can get some normal things like filter and effects in this third section. We have the oscillators that we're using. In this case, we're using a saw wave type and kind of this interesting square looking type. And then finally, we have the envelope and LFO here, which functions as normal. Now that you've seen some of this actual synth parameters, let's take a listen to some of the sounds that you can put into it. Here's the first one I started with, a very simple saw wave pluck. So in order to recreate the sound, you first have to bounce it down into audio. I've already done that here and I've selected it here. But to show you, you can just drag and drop this audio and put it into this part right here. Drag and drop it right here. Now I found while using this, it's best to isolate a single transient. If I click the play button here, it will start generating the patches. However, because there's multiple transients here, it's actually going to create multiple notes for each type of synth. Each one of these has like four or five different notes on it. Each dot represents a preview of what the sound will sound like. So we're going to click the trash button here and we're going to reset it. And we're just going to click that very first transient. Then we'll click play. It's going to give us a better, more accurate representation of the synth that we want to play. Already sounding pretty good. Let's just choose this and then play the MIDI that we have here. Pretty cool, but it's a little bit low. Now when it analyzes your sound, it's not always gonna get the tuning right. So you can either line it up by ear, I'll play both of these together and do that in real time, or you can just use the new Synplant tuning and go buy it. You can also change the effect or the panning of this and make it a little bit more wide. That saw wave is the most basic you can get with a synth. Let's check out this part right here with multiple oscillators playing. Let's see how Synplant was able to recreate it. This is what I was able to come up with. Pretty close. Even though it can create simple sounds like this and recreate them, I find that the sounds from original synths sound better. Where Synplant 2 does shine though is unique sounds such as this. Let me go here. This is a bunch of splice presets I downloaded to see how it would fare with getting some interesting complex sounds. Check this out. And here's what I was able to come up with with Synplant. Doesn't sound the same, but you can hear shades of that distorted tone. It sounds like a race car driver, and where you would use this in a song, I don't know, but it, there are a ton of creative possibilities. I also wanted to test out some pads with some multiple things going on. So I made a synth that sounds like this. Pretty simple synth. There's not a ton going on there, but there is a lot for Synplant to handle. The problem with this synth is there's multiple notes going on at the same time. So in the recreation, Synplant is gonna try to make all of those multiple notes happen in the synth. Here is the Synplant recreation I could best get to fit. 
Now, this isn't terrible. For maybe a horror movie or adding some ambiance, this would be perfect. However, matching the original synth intent that I had is not what happened here. Once I realized what the problem was and what synth plant was having problems with with the multiple notes, I decided to try it again with just a single note to see what the result would be. This is a complex unison pad, that same pad we had before, but just playing one note at a time. And now let's see how synth plant did in recreating it. Here's what... Pretty good. Notice that the tuning is different. So once again, you'd have to go in here and tune it to the rest of your track to make sure it fits. In this case, I actually tuned it so that it is a harmony with my original synth, which I think sounds pretty cool. So now we have something where I'm using the synth plant to get some extra texture and some extra sounds with the original serum patch and combining the two to get something that sounds cool and different. Let's check out this next sample. This next one is a bell sample that I found. Pretty cool. Let's see what I could find with this. This is actually one of my favorite synth patches that I made in synth plant. And there was actually a ton of actual usable options in this tree. Once again, I only put in that first transient so that it was only assessing that very first bell sound. Let's just try with this MIDI sound with this. Let's check out the next sound I did. And this is one I was super impressed with. Now check out the sound I was able to make with Synplant. Almost identical. This is so close that it'd be hard to tell the difference with a busy mix. Next, I decided to try some effects. This one is specifically a downlifter. And sometimes these can be hard to recreate with synths, especially if you're new to the synth creation game. Check this out. It's like... And this is what Synplant was able to recreate. For the most part, pretty close. And then last, we had this cool filter chord synth, and I just wanted to see if I could get anything cool from it. And I was able to get some cool stuff, so check out what it sounds like. And check out what this one sounds like. Different than that original synth and not as high quality, but once again, a cool starting point. Now that is what Synplant can do. And what's even cooler about all of these sounds, they are MIDI, they are synths. I can go in here and change any parameters that I want to from them. However, Synplant does lack a little shine. Some of the synths that it produces aren't as quality as some of its actual serum counterparts or insert synth here counterparts. But I do have faith that it will get there. I do still think that Synplant 2 is going to be great for ambient type sounds. Tweaking a couple parameters here, taking a synth you like, and putting it all together is going to get you a result that probably no one else has ever used before. It'll get you 80% of the way there without knowing anything at all about synths, which is super, super exciting. Now, this synth is a bit pricey. At the time of filming, it cost $150, but they have a three-week free trial, which is what I use to experiment with this to give it to you guys. If you're thinking about buying it, it is a fantastic resource into making some really unique sounds. However, if it was me, I'd probably hold off until the next couple of iterations so that you can actually wait until it gets some more quality from their synths. I'm really excited for the future of AI and AI plugins like this and what it will mean for music producers like me and like you too. Stay tuned if you want to find out more about that kind of stuff. I'm going to cover topics like that all the time. Subscribe so you don't miss a beat and I'll see you in the next one.